I suppose I better start from the beginning, around about 17 years ago. Now, I actually started off as an apprentice HGV technician, which I'd do for about three to four years, and I'd end up driving these full time. But in between, I went off to some independent garages first. So at 15, I had no idea what I wanted to do in my life. I just left school. All I knew is that I wanted to be involved with cars somehow. So a natural thing for me as a 15 year old to do is get involved with the motor trade. A bit unorthodox, but I went for an HGV technician and that is where I did my apprenticeship. And I worked on these trucks and trailers for around, I think it's about four years until the financial crash of 2008. And unfortunately the company that I'm working for, they went into liquidation and I had to go on my own elsewhere. I then moved on to an independent car garage which also did some light HGV and recovery as well. So I kind of dabbed my hand in all three of those things. But in the end, I really liked at the time Audi and Volkswagen cars and I just wanted to start working on better cars. So I ended up going to a Volkswagen main dealership which then ended up being an Audi main dealership and I was there for about five years again. But after 10 years in the motor trade and I felt like I wasn't really going anywhere and even if I could get to the top, it's not really where I want to be. So I decided to leave and go and drive these full time. I didn't know what I was gonna do in my life, but this was just much better money at the time. So I thought it was a stepping stone. So when I started driving trucks full time, it's this exact truck here, which I got brand new back in 2017. And I was driving nights, so I would go to work at like 7 p.m. and I'd finish at 7 a.m. Now I did that for, I, I can't actually remember fully, but I'm gonna guess near enough two years. And in the day, when I'd get a few hours, I try and spend time buying and fixing cars. And to give you an idea how much driving we was doing in this truck, this was double manned. I was doing nights and we had a day driver doing days and we both did around 400 to 450 miles each. So this means this truck was doing 800 miles a day, five days a week, four and a half thousand miles a week, 18,000 miles a month. And to give you an idea how many miles this truck's now done, 1.3 million kilometers, mad. So I wasn't really sure what I was doing in my life at this point. I was now driving trucks full time, but that meant I could save a lot more money because I earned a lot more money driving trucks. And I'd always dabbled in buying and selling cars in the motor trade when I was a bit younger. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna just buy a car, fix it, try and sell it and see what happens. And in the end, I ended up buying my first trailer. So after I went out and bought my first trailer, I also went out and bought a Volkswagen Touareg 3 litre TDI as well. That setup cost me sub 10 grand for both of them, uh, which at the time was a great, I mean the Touareg could tow three and a half ton, I had a three and a half ton trailer. It meant I could go out and pick cars up that just needed more work than I'd been previously doing. Before I'd just been doing a little bit of body work, which I couldn't actually do myself, so I ended up subbing out. So by getting a trailer, it meant I could concentrate on work more that I could do myself in the workshop. And, and it's at this point I realized that transport on YouTube completely coincide with each other, and without one, I wouldn't have the other. Now, don't get me wrong, this is before YouTube was even a thing for me. At the time, I was just buying and repairing cars, and I just wanted a trailer so I could go pick cars up that needed more work doing, so there was more profit in it for me. And for doing that, I hired a recovery truck, and it cost me a lot of money. It cost me like 150 quid just to go and pick a car up from Sussex or wherever it was. Um, so I went out and bought a trailer, and that is where it all started with transport. It, I never designed, I never intended to get into transport at all. It just happened by mistake. So it's only when I thought, well, I'm gonna have the trailer sitting here a lot of the time and I'm, I'm not busy enough five days a week to be in the workshop. So I thought, well, I know I used to work at Cambridge Audi, Volkswagen, etc. So let me just speak to the people down there. I know they need cars collecting and delivering all the time. It, I used to be there, so I know how it works. So luckily I know the manager and I managed to secure uh, my first ever job. I went and collected a brand new Audi Q5 from Brighton Audi and took it up to Cambridge Audi. And yeah, the first time I ever working for myself. It was weird, but it was also really rewarding because I'm working for myself. So if this doesn't work, then I'm the only one to blame and I'm the only one that's gonna make it work. So driving down there and picking it up, it just, your mindset's completely different. Like you want to do it, you know the reward is there, you know you're not lining the pockets of someone else so the desire to do it is just that much more and yeah really really enjoyed it and i started collecting one to three cars a week um from then on and those one to three cars a week because i'm retaining all the profit myself so i'm working my, uh, for myself i don't have to pay anyone else i earned more money doing that than driving a truck five days a week so i took my first difficult decision well actually it's probably my second or third at this point but i stopped driving trucks full time 
I drove my transporter or my Tuareg and my trailer two to three times a week and I was working in the workshop the other two days. And that is where it all kind of starts off, I guess. But this is where it starts to go wrong badly. One day I was working on one of the project cars. I was a few cars in at this point. I was starting to get the hang of it, but I get a knock at the door from undercover police. And it turned out the latest project car I was working on that I bought cheap, cheap being the problem here, it turned out it had been stolen and they thought that I'd stolen it, which is why they were undercover. Uh, but luckily after proving that I'd bought it and um, yeah, I didn't steal it, they're all happy, they came in, uh, but I was not happy because they were gonna take away a car that I'd just spent 8,000 pounds buying and uh, yeah, absolutely gutted. I even spent 300 pounds fixing the bumper, but literally came in, bought a recovery truck in, they just took the car away and I never saw the car or my 8,350 pounds ever again. And that literally nearly ended it all for me because I'd been doing this not very long at all and I'd already lost all my money. And yeah, I mean, this is where Car Vertical have kindly sponsored today's video because it would have saved me 8,350 quid. Now, Car Vertical checks the complete history of a car that you're looking to buy or may already own. Now, I'm going to give you an example of a report that shows that the car is stolen, which would have saved me. So we have this BMW M6 here as a, an example report, and we can see it's wanted for theft, and it's also been recorded as damaged in the past. Now, we can see straight away it's got some pictures, and it looks okay from the pictures, so I imagine this is after it has been repaired. And you can see here, look, it's currently wanted as stolen. That was only recorded less than a month ago. So you need to keep a complete vigilant eye out on that. And we can also see if we scroll down a little bit more, it's been damaged one time, category S write-off in 2021. And it was last sold at 22 grand, which is a good 10 grand under its retail value. So we assume that it was sold after it had been repaired. Now, if we scroll a little bit further down, we can see that it's had a whole host of information about the car, such as ownership changes, license plate changes, MOTs, uh, even when the car was on for sale. And if we scroll right to the bottom, we can see that the last bit of information on this car was when it was actually stolen. And there's nothing else after that. It is still wanted as stolen. So if I'd have done this check, I'd have saved myself a lot of money. So if you click the link in my description, it takes you over to that website and you can use my discount code, which will give you a bit of a discount on your next report. So a massive thanks to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video and continuing to support the channel. Looking back, am I glad it happened? I don't really know. I lost a lot of money being that young as well, but I've never made a mistake buying a car again and I never will make a mistake buying a car again. I always do my homework 100%. So I guess in hindsight, it may have been a good thing. I'll never know. So after saving up for ages, months and months and months again, and a few little repair projects in between, I finally bought my first crash damaged car from Copart. Now I'll put a screenshot up now. You can clearly see it says Volkswagen Sirocco R up there, but this is where I learned my second most valuable lesson. And that is go through all the pictures, look at everything, do as much homework on the car you can, this time I know it's not stolen because I'm buying it from Copart, but now I need to go around and make sure the car is exactly what it says it is because I got it delivered and when it turned up, it wasn't a Volkswagen Sirocco R. It was an R line, two litre TDI. Again, devastated. So I completely had no interest in fixing that at all. It really annoyed me. So luckily I managed to sell it on eBay for only about hundred pound less than I paid for it. So crisis averted on that one. And again, another valuable lesson learned. Then one day I was just scrolling through YouTube as you do and this video popped up. It was a YouTuber from all the way over in America and I'd never seen anything like this before on YouTube. Didn't really even know it existed, but it was a repair project for a Nissan GTR that was crash damaged. And safe to say, one episode in and I was completely hooked on the whole series, plus another few projects after that as well. So that really got me thinking, well, hang about, I'm kind of getting into this sort of stuff now. I've never, I've not really seen anything at the time, uh, UK wise for crash damaged cars on YouTube. And I've got a workshop and I kind of know a little bit about cars. So why don't I give this a try? There was just one massive problem. And that's being in front of camera. I couldn't think of anything else worse in the world than being in front of a camera. I'm a massive introvert and often quite a shy person. Just look at my first video. Welcome everybody, my name is Dean and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel, Saving Salvage. Welcome everybody, here is my brand new, or new to me anyway, 2012 Audi RS3. 
But if I was gonna do this, I knew that my first car had to be really attractive to an audience and one that I really wanted to work on and own as well. And that's a massive thing for me. The cars that I buy and repair, I have to want to also own them because it just gives me the motivation to fix them. And the perfect first car for me was a 2012 Audi RS3. It had only done 12,000 miles. It was a Cat N, so the damage should hopefully not be too bad. So I managed to win it. I went and bought it and yeah that journey alone was is it was great i mean don't get me wrong i don't think it kicked off the channel i don't think it really kicked off uh, my first thousand two thousand subscribers wasn't until i got my old audi s3 8l uh, i think it was but the rs3 gave me great confidence in uh, building something that was kind of valuable at the time and i went on to repair that car fully even painted it myself which came out really well and it even featured on carwell now that car was a write-off and the guy who owns it, he actually runs a YouTube channel called Saving Salvage. I could see his foot wheel spinning. But... So then over the next couple of years, I kind of, that's what I did. I balanced driving transporters to working on YouTube. And as the channel grew, so did the transport business. But that started to become a bit of a problem because I was starting to work more and more on transport and have less and less time on YouTube. Now, don't forget, for the first probably 18 months, maybe even two years, I earned nothing from YouTube. So it's at this point, it's purely a hobby to be um, repairing the cars, and I'm just hoping for a profit at the end of it. So transport had to take priority, and it always did. So it meant that I wouldn't get enough videos out, or I wouldn't get I wouldn't be consistent with YouTube and that started to be a bit of a problem so my first idea was to buy this my first proper transporter dedicated transporter I sold the Tuareg and I bought this Fiat Ducato beaver tail and that meant I could then start transporting two cars at once which I'd hope would alleviate some of the stress that means instead of driving twice like Brighton and back Brighton and back I could take two cars down at once save me a load of time, a load of fuel, and get double the money, basically. But I just kept getting busier and busier. I know that's a really great problem to have, but it just didn't help YouTube at all. I went from delivering two to three cars a week to around 10 cars a week, and I was just full-time transporting. I had no time left for YouTube whatsoever. But YouTube is something, fixing cars is something that I really wanted to pursue, and it's where I really want to spend my time. So I made a massive decision, and I bought another truck and a harder driver. And it was great. I have two transporters, two trailers, and it means that my driver can take away some of the work, which means I can spend more time in the workshop. Wrong. Transport just started getting busier and busier. Um, as we worked for more and more dealerships, we became known for, I guess, being uh, a good transport partner. So we just started doing more and more work. And we were both ended up being flat out. Um, both working five days a week, me trying not to but and still ending up working at least four days a week so and then on top of that i also had another truck and another driver to manage as well as doing all the maintenance on all these trucks trailers as well we go through tires the amount of fuel it's just a lot more to manage so it all became just as difficult if not difficult as working on my own full time i mean here's an example of a typical day that i still do and a typical day for me would consist of picking up two cars and taking them anywhere in the country. Today, I've got a Golf and a new Cooper Born and I'm taking them to Bradford and Stockport in Manchester. So for the last two years, that's kind of where we've been at, just working solidly whilst trying to film videos. And that leads me up to current day. We've just been delivering between 10 and 20 cars a week for the last two years, solidly. So here we are at present day. And to give you an idea just how many miles I've done over the last four years, 200,000 miles in four years and over 260 videos. And you might have noticed I now have a black Iveco instead of a white one. Well, the white one I bought brand new in 2019 with a new driver, I actually sold that last year because that had done 210,000 miles. And the new black one is not even a year old yet. It won't be a year old until the end of June. And that's already on 90, I think 94,000 miles. So 
just goes to show how many miles that we do. So over 200,000 miles, over 260 videos, 25 different project cars, and you can probably understand why there's sometimes quite a big gap between projects and projects like the TVR, which is a massive project. I just haven't found the time to start again. And also why the workshop sometimes, a lot of the time, quite a bit of a mess. And also during lockdown, my wife gave birth to our second child and just last year gave birth to our third child. So that's three kids now under six years old. So I think I need to uh, give a massive thanks to my wife who's supported everything I do from start to finish, from the transport business to like every step of the way, she has been there and just helping. I, I don't know how she manages to do it, but she supports everything I do. And without her, none of this would be possible absolute fact so yeah just want to say a massive appreciation to everything my wife does and uh yeah i wouldn't be here without her simple as that so i'm sure you'll all agree by now that i need to change something i can't do both youtube and the transporting and i've got that difficult decision of either do i quit youtube or do i stop driving from the company that i've built up from the ground from nothing to what it is today and yeah i'm gonna have to quit driving Dear company who I've driven with for five years, please do not consider me for any more driving going forward. Thank you very much, Dean. So I thought of an idea that I've been trying to do for ages and I've actually been in progress um, doing this for about six or seven months now and that is setting up my own raffling company and that is just so I can raffle off the cars that I build and maybe some extras as well. And there it is. So I have set up my own competition website called Compete for Cars. The website competeforcars.co.uk. I also put a link in the description below as well. And the idea behind it is I just, I don't really want to sell the cars. I'd rather, much rather one of you guys could win it for 99p or whatever the price was. It just makes a lot more sense. And yeah, just one of you guys get to own the car for basically nothing. It just, it's just a win-win all round. There will be a few other competitions as well, depending on how we get on. But primarily, it's just for the cars that I build. And yes, the GT4, the R8, the Focus RS, the M2 competition, the S3, they will all be cars that will be raffled off to one of you guys for less than a quid. So I'll be doing live draws on Facebook, and that's another thing I'll have to get used to as well, doing something live. Again, couldn't think of anything worse. Um, but we're gonna start off with two competitions, and after you finish watching this video, they will be live on www.competeforcars.co.uk. I will put the link in the description for the website. And the first car is an old trusty reliable steed. Now, unfortunately, the trusty reliable steed isn't actually here at the moment. It's a way getting some niggly bits fixed on it that I couldn't do myself. So I just wanted to make sure it was 100%. So here's some pictures instead. So yeah, this car that I've had for, it's probably been one of the long, well, it's definitely the longest car I've had on the channel. I've had this for probably getting on three years now and it's been such a good car. I've used it for absolutely everything. I've moved home in it, I think twice. Uh, had my mountain bike in it. I've done all sorts with it. It's just been such a good car, which is probably why I've never sold it. But I think it's time. I think it's right that that should be the first car. So if you're interested in the Skoda Octavia VRS guys or the other competition as well, which is the straight £1,000 cash giveaway, head over to the website now. That's www.competeforcars.co.uk. Grab yourself a ticket. And if you're not even interested in the Octavia or the £1,000 cash giveaway, go over there anyway and set up an account because I plan to release all my cars on there at some point to be raffled off. So therefore, you'll get a notification when one goes live on the website. So it's still worth signing up anyway. So I hope you did enjoy this video. Video, bit of an insight into everything I've done since I've left school um, as I said it was slightly different please do like if you haven't already please do subscribe and also follow me on Instagram uh, saving underscore salvage and also at compete for cars as well um, I've just found myself with a lot more time on my hands so let's go make some videos cheers guys